Welcome to Design for the Creative Mind, a podcast for interior designers and creative entrepreneurs to run their business with purpose, efficiency, and passion. Because while every design is different, the process should remain the same. Prepare yourself for some good conversations with amazing guests, a dash of Jesus, and a touch of the woo-woo, and probably a swear word or two. If you're ready to stop trading your time for money and enjoy your interior design business, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Michelle Lynn. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the podcast designed for the creative mind. This is a business podcast for interior designers and creatives, which is perfect because today I'm excited to announce that I have Nancy Gansenkoffer. I probably should have asked if I was pronouncing your name right, Nancy, before I introduced you. But Nancy specializes in coaching interior designers and service-based entrepreneurs. She can teach you to maximize your profitability and identify and serve your ideal clients with confidence. In effect, Nancy becomes your business partner. She helps you develop the most straightforward path to higher scalability, visibility, and profitability through confident decision-making, efficient systems, development, and effective communication. So she is like the whole bucket of wonderful. And in addition to all of this, she's also the founding president of the Interior Design Society Virtual Chapter. She's an executive IDS board member at large. And she was the first recipient of the IDS Outstanding Leadership Award for her 12 years of active participation in national leadership and her local chapter in Long Island, New York. So can we welcome Nancy Gazenkoffer? If I pronounce your name right. Did I pronounce your last name right? You did, Gansakoffer. It's very phonetic, but it's very scary because it's long. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited Thank to have you. you here. Oh my gosh. Yes, it is absolutely my honor. And I'm going to apologize in advance if I do some silly fangirling (laughs) because your reputation precedes you, Nancy. You have been such a huge impact in the interior design industry for for over a decade, right? Yeah, thank you so much, Michelle. You you just gave me goosebumps because it's truly been my last 25 years being in this industry. And this is not something I ever expected. This really is something that evolved slowly over time, like for so many people. But I was a businesswoman. I worked in a bank. I was a first vice president. I never even could design anything in my own house, right? It was like, kind of like, I'm all business. What can I sell? Right? (laughs) (laughs) And I became an art consultant for and was one for 17 years because my mom was an artist. Oh, so she called me one day after my third son, uh, when my third child was born, my son had to have open heart surgery and Uh he was quarantined for two years. Oh, God bless that little babe. And you, that has to be heartbreaking as a mom. It was really difficult at that time. Third child, I had a four year old, a two year old and a baby that was quarantined and um, was in now the hospital with pneumonia. And I couldn't work at that point. Like I had to. Wow full-time stay at home. And then when he turned two and he was no longer quarantined, and by the way, he's 22 today in his final year of college. Amazing. I know. So like all (laughs) all is well. I like to say that quickly so people don't go, oh my God, what happened? Um, You know, thankfully Mm -hmm. he's, he's an amazing kid along with my other two. But my mother called me at one point when I was like, hmm, what do I do next in my life? Right. I was in the corporate world. I loved it. I could go back. But well, I got a taste of being at home and my kids need me. What do I do now? So my mother calls and says, I'm giving away all my artwork. This is ridiculous. I'm piling it up. I'm like, well, send it to me. Like, let me let me see what I can do with it. Because she was really a very talented watercolor artist. Ooh. She must have sent me 200 pieces, Michelle. Oh, like, my gosh. So she was stockpiling it. Oh, yeah. Prolific. And she was running the art club in her community in Las Vegas, where my parents had moved. So I now have 200 pieces of artwork. And I'm like, what do I do? So I started (laughs) having home art parties. And home art parties were not making me any money, but it was fun. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) there's wine. 
<laughs> and cheese. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? So wine and cheese and, and sticky tacking all work to people's walls, friends and family, and asking them to invite their friends and family. Oh, wow. And it really, again, I'd work like 60 to 80 hours a week, putting a party together. Anyone who's ever done Pampered Chef knows what it's like. <laughs> yeah. Right? To put That's together. Back in the day, I can completely remember those. Yeah. And I hated yeah. those, by the way. I never went to those home off parties. I was not even one of those people, yet suddenly I was having them. <laughs> um, so working my butt off, doing little cafes, doing street fairs, doing home off parties, making nothing, giving my mother a little new lease on life when she was in her 50s, which is now where I am. I can't even believe it. And one day, <laughs> an interior designer walked into a party. And that changed my entire path. Really? Yeah. And I still remember the designer and I still see her once in a while. And I thank her because she said, that's the perfect piece of artwork for my client's home. Can you bring it to the house? And I just started saying yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then we're at the house. They loved it. We're going to design the whole bathroom around it. By the way, it wasn't my mother's piece. It was a different artist that I had started, <laughs> I had Sorry, started to take on other artists because they found me, right? So I was carrying artwork. They would give it to me on consignment for free. I Fabulous. would show it in all these places. And then if I sold it, then I would pay them. So I'm at the person's house with the designer. She's like, can you help us frame it? I'm like, absolutely. I'm, I don't know anything at that point. I don't know the difference between a watercolor and oil. What needs matting? What needs glass? Like nothing. I have no idea. But, but you had the confidence to just say yes. Which is why confidence is the basis of all my coaching, right? And I yes. tend to very much attract people who are looking for that. I need to be able to charge my worth and, and run a profitable business, right? Because mm -hmm. of that confidence. So anyway, went to a framer, figured it all out, had people teach me expressive living art framing and later years accessories was born. And 17 years after I was working with so many designers, watching mm -hmm. them with their clients in the homes, watching the good, the bad and the ugly sometimes. Oh, yeah. And I started having seminars for them in my showroom, which was in my house. And a lot of them were business seminars because that was my superpower. Absolutely. And when I turned 50, I was divorced at that point. Three kids that were now on the cusp of launching. Mm -hmm. which, by the way, they're still on the cusp of launching. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't quite got them. A couple of years, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, another couple of years, they'll be launched. Blame the um, pandemic. And I decided, you know what, I need to sell the house. It's too big for me. My kids are, are moving on. And I didn't want to carry shit around for a living anymore because we yeah. know it's not glamorous. Dear Lord, no. Right? Sweaty. Sweaty. It's heavy. We would carry 500 pieces of artwork in and out of people's homes with matting and framing selected all on premise. Yep. That was wow. the stupid. Bring it in for framing. Bring it back. Mm -hmm. Supervise the installation. And then I expanded my house. I created a whole showroom for accessories. And we did the same thing with the accessories, packed them all up, brought them to people's houses, staged them, sold or didn't sell. And then, right. you know, it was a lot, but for That's 17 what, years, it was good. A lot of just physical labor. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, but you we weren't at the, the bank part. anymore. <laughs> we missed the part where I was a personal trainer for a couple of years before my youngest was born. So I, I did switch it up and I was in great shape at that stage of my life. You were just lifting different weights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Not so much. Wow. Anymore, but <laughs> hung my shingle as a coach to and transitioned out of expressive living and started coaching interior designers on how they could create profitable businesses just like you. And doesn't it feel so rewarding to do what we do? Oh my gosh. I know this is exactly where God wants me just to be able to assist women in earning what they're worth, not what they're worth, because, you know, we're all worth a bazillion freaking dollars because we're made in the image of God, but the services oftentimes are so not valued. And so I love that. So let's, I want to talk about your book. Mm -hmm. So yes, I am very excited to be here and I'm so excited to talk to you, but also before we dive into the book, I want to talk about how, you know, in our industry, there's like some secretiveness, some competition, and sometimes not like a feeling of scarcity. And I want to just say that, you know, 
leading by example as two coaches here, yep. you know, it's, it's important that we all just recognize that there's somebody for everybody. And as a, as a coach that I am, I've got my program. I do some one-on-ones. You do your, you do your one-on-ones, you do your programs and stuff like that. It's important that people find who they connect with. Like 100%. it's hundred percent. I'm not for everybody. Like I'm totally not. I get that. It's the same thing with your clients is that you're not for everybody. Correct. Correct. Lesson 101, right? Not, every, yeah. not everyone is your client. And for the people who are listening, who are eventually looking for a coach, if ever, you just mm-hmm. do have to be attracted to almost like their voice, their style, the way they communicate. And if right. you're not, don't try to force it because it's never going to work. Just like if you it's like dating. force it. it. Oh, it's exactly <laughs> like dating. And I know that well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a conversation for cocktails. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. So so let us just lead into this conversation. I want to talk about your book and and just other things that are applicable to this industry and what you bring to so many individuals. But just leading by example that we've got two coaches here that are arm in arm wanting to continue to lift the industry one person at a time. Absolutely. And it's going to take all of us to do that because this industry really, when I came into it, it Mm -hmm. was a whole different ball game back then. Yeah. I couldn't find anybody to help. That's right. I think it's because nobody knew what the hell they were doing. Correct. So they didn't want to share. Right. So there's a whole new education that we're giving the public as well as giving the designers on what this industry is worth. And that's been my mission since I started like these, these services for the people who are listening are so valuable and people need Mm -hmm. them and you need to be there to be able to serve them. Right. So yes, 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 yes. I do too. So Nancy's book is called respond with confidence. And I, it's, I got it off of Amazon, like maybe right when it came out and I've had the chance to flip through it and just, I'm so excited for you. Congratulations, Nancy. This is a hell of a, I mean, I can barely get a, I outsource my blogging because I can barely get a blog done these days. Well, God listen, bless you for getting a book done. It was not easy. And about halfway through, I was, I hired a book coach, book writing coach. And halfway mm-hmm. through, I went, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like this. It's painful. And it's stopping me from doing other things. And I turned into a big baby. And I was <laughs> like, I'm a talker. I'm not a writer. Can I hire a ghost writer? And he's like, you can, but you're halfway through. I'm like, you know, it's so tough. And it's such a simple book, Michelle. It's not a difficult book. It's one of those books that reminds you of the things you've learned your whole life, but you sometimes need to go back and remember and and back to basics, right? It's not complicated. But when I get someone who calls me or sends me a DM, I just pulled out your book because I have a difficult client and I needed to reread to walk away Give it 24 hours and come back and reread what I wrote and take out yes. emotion and all the, you know, angst and upset and then send it. And again, I thank you for giving that opportunity to them to look back at the book. I thought that's why I did it. Absolutely. Just, and, and it's so funny because one of the things that I marked in your book is uh, don't assume they're out to get you. And I just see that so often in so many of our forum conversations on Facebook and whatnot that, you know, people are pissed off because they're shopping them or they're pissed off because they're asking for something different or whatever. And oftentimes it seems like it's us as designers against the clients, whereas really it's just that the clients aren't educated and that's, that's our own lack of confidence to tell them here's how it works and here's our boundaries and et cetera, et cetera. So I just, in regards to what you just said about the email, like they are allowed to ask, uh you just have to answer and take the emotion out of it. And Mm -hmm. the story we tell ourselves as to what they must be thinking about us. How could they ask that question? They think (laughs) I'm I'm trying to rip them off or they think this, what if they just think I want to ask this question? And I need it to be answered. And it's that simple. Uh It's, it's the stories we all tell ourselves that create the drama that, and and they're usually stories. Yes. Based on our insecurity. 
Yes, or a story we've heard from someone else that's never happened mm-hmm. to us, but yet we're somehow applying it to us, right? Instead of staying mm-hmm. in our own lane, in our own lives, and not worrying about everybody else and what they've been through. That's right? a great point. Yeah, absolutely. And calling me crazy, but my mind reading skills suck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when I assume somebody's doing something, I'm probably I'm like, yeah, I'm making that shit up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. it was funny because, again, when I first started this book, why did I start it? It started out as a completely different thing. It started out mm-hmm. as I want to book, write a book about my life. My life, like a lot, like most people's lives, have interesting aspects to it, right? I've had mm-hmm. kids, they were all sick. They, I have one transgender son. I have one gay son. I have a daughter who's a travel agent who travels the world. Like really different things. Amazing. Yeah. You know, going through a divorce and still being very amicable with my ex. So I called the book coach to say, I want to write a book about like this stuff, right? How do you mm-hmm. get through all this stuff? And he's like, nah, no one really cares about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. All right. I guess you're right. He's like, let's take note over the next two weeks of what people call you for primarily. I'm like, well, they call me to to ask me how to make more money and, and how to charge their worth. And he's like, okay, but just mm-hmm. take note over the next two weeks, over the next two weeks, I was noticing more and more the prevalent conversation was this client is saying this. What do I say back? My son, mom, this professor said this because I wrote this. Now, how do I fix it? Right. And Uh my girlfriend, who was a manager in a medical office, calls me and says, I have a difficult staff member. She did this, 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 and this. And this is what I'm thinking of doing. But I wanted to check with you first. Right. And I started (laughs) realizing people were calling me to ask how to respond in business situations. So hence how it ended up being respond with confidence, the business owner's blueprint for handling difficult situations. And then I peppered my stories of my life where I learned lessons related to communication into the book. And that makes it all that much more personal, but the stories also make it much more believable because you can you can stand at the top of the mountain and speak to people. But when you can tell them that this is the mountain that I climbed and I'm going to show you how to do it. Yes. The credibility there is just amazing. Let me interrupt myself to take a quick moment to thank Satinoff Insurance Agency for sponsoring this episode of the Designed for the Creative Mind podcast. Their support and understanding of the interior design, decorating and home staging industries is unrivaled. Satinoff understands what our businesses do, and they provide insurance that lets me sleep at night. Yep, this is the firm that I use, and they will do the same for your sleep habits and your business too. They're more than an insurance agency, they're an extension of my business. They take care of the worry because they are the experts, which allows me and my team breathing room to do what we do best, design beautiful spaces. You can find their contact information below in the show notes. Give them a call today. And can I tell you one more story? Because it was really like full for me. The book starts out telling a story about how when I was an art consultant, an interior designer who was really making me jump through hoops, getting the right artwork for her own home. It wasn't even for a company. <laughs> and I don't know how Shocking. many emails, five, six in changing her mind, changing her price point, changing the um, the style of the art. Oh, I was going crazy. So I hit respond and wrote, I hit forward to my, my assistant at the time and said, Oh my God, what a pain in the ass this woman is. Blah, 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 blah. And I had hit reply instead of forward. Oh, son of a monkey. (laughs) And I stood up, my whole family was there. I started screaming. I'm throwing my computer at my kids because they were young teenagers like, take take it back. How do you get the email to come back? Right. So (laughs) there was no way she had a Blackberry. I ran into my bathroom. You'll read it in the book if you choose to buy it, everyone. But in the end, two months ago, I was hired to speak local at an event for interior designers. And I walked in and everyone was getting a copy of my book. And she was there. Now, obviously, I didn't name her in the book, but I walked right up to her. I'm like, hey, (laughs) you remember me? And she's like, yes, I do, Nancy. How are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm great. And she was friendly to me. But I said, by the way, there's 100 copies of the book in those bags. And when you're reading it, 
you're the story in the front. Do you remember when? And I repeat it. And she's like, yes, I tell that story often. I'm like, oh, 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 ouch. Yeah. But then you know what? She graciously said, we've all made mistakes and it's over. And congratulations on your book. So she was very gracious. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that, and it just goes to show that, you know what, there's nobody that doesn't make mistakes. So when people are feeling like they're an imposter or that, you know, that you've got all your shizzle together because you look polished on your Instagram, there's all sorts of stories that we all have. And it is truly responding with confidence because you could have like not even greeted her yes. when you walked into that room. Yes. So that, I mean, that would have been the easy way out. My heart was racing. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. And how many years had passed? Oh my goodness. I mean, that right? was... So I've been a coach for six years now, and that was probably in my first five years of being an art consultant. So, which And your maybe, heart was still racing. Yeah, because, you know, it's embarrassing to make a mistake. But the bottom line is just like I did when it happened. I faced it. I called her right away. I said, you're going to open up your email. You're not going to be happy with what you see. So I'm going to ask you to delete it without reading it. But if you decide to read it. My apologies. And then I made my excuses. I'm having a tough night. My kids are sick, blah, 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 which I don't even remember if they were true or not. Um, And hopefully you'll still do business with me. And she's like, of course I will. But no, she never did. (laughs) (laughs) But on the other hand, that kind of goes back to not every client is for you because that was kind of a relief not to have to deal with it anymore. It really was. It really was. Yeah. It's like sometimes getting like, so, so that's, that's a great question. So when you get negative feedback from a client or maybe a client says, I just don't want to work with you anymore, whatever the case may be, what do you see as the biggest mistake that people make when they get that feedback? I think they try to hold on too much. I mean, I always say if you're, if your business owner has 15 clients pending or in the hopper or in your Mm -hmm. pipeline, one client saying, I don't think you're the right designer for me, let's say is, Uh is going to not devastate you. You're going to be like, you know what? You're right. Maybe it's better if you work with someone else, but if you only have one, two or three clients on the docket, it hurts. You're suddenly like, well, what did I do wrong? And, and how do I get it back? And how do I save it? And really, sometimes it's not just, it's not about you at all. It's Mm -hmm. just that it's not a good fit. And in the dating world, you learn quickly to say, I don't think we're a match, even though you're a really great person. And you can learn to say that in your business and not dwell on it and feel like a failure because it's just not meant to be, then Mm -hmm. it will take you light years, you know, into the future and advance your business just by getting the confidence not to chase someone who's really not a good fit. And you'll have more joy, much more joy. Because like, I look back at the yahoos that I dated before I met my husband and I didn't get married till I was 37. So I dated a lot of yahoos. Thank God. None of them asked me to marry them. You know, (laughs) I dodged a few bullets there. Exactly. (laughs) Because I probably would have said yes, just out of stupid, out of ignorance. Let's just call it ignorance. Yeah. So it's like, you can apply that to your clients as well. Dodge that bullet. Definitely. So, the relief. You sleep so much better <laughs> when you let yeah. a typical client go that doesn't match your style or doesn't mm-hmm. refuses to go into your well-established, well-oiled machine of a process. And they're trying to make you change it. And you're going, maybe I should to accommodate them because they are the client. Yeah. Like, no, that's not a good fit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you do instead of reacting? So instead of saying, okay, you know, either you get pissed off because they give you the negative feedback or they tell you that you're not, a, that you guys are not a good fit, or maybe they just give you negative feedback or something that you take as a critical comment because you are working with them. You know, it's a matter of people tend to react meaning right away. They're like, just, oh my God, and they respond and they start to reel in what I describe in the book as like a tornado, right? This emotional tornado that's spinning. But Mm -hmm. what I'm suggesting in the book is they take time to decompress first, right? We don't have to answer everyone the minute they message us, whether it comes through text or email. It's not, you don't have to just because they messaged you. doesn't mean you have to say, you said to jump, I did. Like, yes, Nancy, I had this conversation with somebody on my team yesterday. So whenever this whole podcast comes out, it was just yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I had this definitely. conversation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it happens say, all the time. 
take time, de- you know, like step away mm-hmm. and then go back and respond. Yeah. So, so basically what I teach people in the book is to decompress first. That could be mm-hmm. taking a walk, calling your best friend, venting to your dog, exercising, watching TV. I don't care how you decompress. I give you a bunch of ideas, but you mm-hmm. want to decompress first when something upsets you. And even if it's meant to be constructive and you didn't take it that way, you mm-hmm. need to decompress if you feel you're getting upset. And yes, as women, it tends to happen more than men, but there are men also, and I coach men as well, that mm-hmm. really get ramped up quickly. So decompress first and then go to assess the situation. No, make a decision in advance how you want this situation to play out. And then reverse, there you go. Okay, reverse engineer your response. Hmm. Right? It's just kind of like designing a room. You know exactly. what you want the room to look like. You have to reverse engineer and fit into the budget, the scale, the blah, 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 blah style. Correct. Correct. Because if I want to save this relationship, my response is going to be different than if I want to say goodbye, we're not a match or whether I want to consciously modify my process because they brought up a good point and maybe I did miscommunicate something and Mm -hmm. I I want to modify. What do you want the result to be? And then also in that assess section is assess the previous communications because when I analyzed how I advise people, one of my steps, which I never even realized until this coach pointed it out to me, was read through the previous communications as if you were the client or you were the person on the other side. Did you actually miscommunicate along the way as well? Right. So you want to assess the the, the string of communication of what's happening. Yes, because oftentimes we take for granted what we do and don't accept explain it or educate our clients enough. Correct. Like, Hey, it was a COM. It, it was not my fault la, 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 or whatever. It's like, what the hell is a COM? I was just going to say, and what's a COM is going to be the right. next question, right? Uh-huh. Right. And so we take for granted because we're in the middle of this industry all the time, or we're in the middle of our processes all the time. Yes. Yes. But yeah. You, I think it's, it's, I, you had a chapter on it. Well, one, I love the solution focus. You started with Tony Robbins, who's one of my favorites, yes. but it, um, chapter six is that it all starts with you and you say, you know, evaluate yourself and then reflect on your motivation because sometimes we just want to be right. Yep. And that isn't yep. necessarily the case. Yeah. Assess the outcome, which is what you just said. So yeah, I mean, you've got some amazing nuggets in here. I might have to go buy this for my whole family. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's interesting because my 25 year old reads it and comes out only like three chapters in and she's like, uh-huh. okay, mom, like every one of my friends needs to read this before they yeah. go into the workforce. And I'm like, I never even thought of that as a marketing the book in that way. But that's why I do love to hear other people's feedback. I'm going to buy this for my husband. Mm-hmm. I get it twice, twice, which is so unusual for me. My husband who hasn't read a book in 30 years, picked the book up, read the whole thing and thought it was amazing. I'm like, okay, one, because it's a simple read, which is great. It's very, it's very simple without being like you're talking down to anybody or remedial. It's still very educational while being easy to read. Right. And that was my goal. Mm -hmm. And when there was a point of, you know, listen, everyone gets their moments of insecurity. I had plenty of moments of insecurity with this book. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm like, it's too simple. It's too simple. Everyone's going to like, think it's like for kindergartners, you know, and I was just really like, (laughs) at one point I was reeling and somebody said to me, what are your favorite books? And I'm like, business books, um, the perfect day formula. It's like the simplest book ever. And then I named another one and another Mm -hmm. one. And they were all very simple, quick reads that I could gain Uh, quick lessons from that were easy to understand. And Mm -hmm. this is so important also with staff, right? One of the things I love to do the most, I've been managing people since I was 24 years old. I love to help people grow teams and manage their staff. And this helps with that. Love it. Because communicating with confidence and communicating period is so important when you're starting to grow a team. That's so funny. I didn't realize that you and I have a very similar background. I went into management like right out of college. So I was 23, 24, and I've been managing people since then. And there's such an innate, I I can't speak for you, but I learned the hard way by being, you know, 12 years old and managing people. (laughs) Um, You know, I did a lot of things wrong. 
So yeah, had I had this book, because there's a lot of things that you learn just by bumps and bruises, it would have been super helpful. And that's what I teach people, my team and clients and stuff now. The reminders. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I don't know if you ever diet, Michelle, but you know what? You diet, you can read about dieting for our entire lives and just, Mm -hmm. oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh yeah. Let me read. These are refreshers that we tend Mm -hmm. to move away from when we're busy. Right. So that's why. Yeah. Just moving at the speed of lightning. Now, I think you mentioned in the book, you don't like the phrase, I'm sorry. Yep. Can you expand on that? Because I think that that's a very common phrase that we're taught the client's always right. It is one of the phrases that drives me crazy. And believe it or not, my entire team, when they get hired and when they're Uh on, they're not allowed to say they're sorry. Because to me, I'm sorry means I did something purposely to hurt you. And I need to say, I'm sorry. And I do say, I'm sorry. I'm not a person who never says I'm sorry. If Mm -hmm. I've done something to hurt you, purposefully, I will be the first, like when I say purposefully, it could be purposely by mistake, but it's more of the Mm -hmm. hurtful, right? That I really affected someone's emotions. I may, but other than that, most things I categorize, and I don't think I worded it in the book this way, although it would have been a good way. They're more like accidents, Yes. Right. So when my staff makes a mistake, sending an email and sends it out to the entire world instead of the 10 people who were supposed to get it, I'm like, it used to be, oh my God, I'm so sorry, Nancy. But I don't, it's okay. Everybody makes mistakes, Mm -hmm. everybody has accidents. Obviously, if you meant to do it, I would fire you but you didn't mean to do it. It's an accident. I make mistakes. So all I want from my staff is, Nancy, this is what happened. This is why it happened. This is how we fixed it. And this is how it's not going to happen again. Those four things. And now I, the communication with my team is amazing. They don't even apologize to themselves as much, although I hear it once in a while. Yeah. Right. It's just, just tell me, how you fixed it, how it happened. I know you're human. Everyone is. Human. Yes. And that's, it's funny because I had this conversation with my three-year-old daughter just this weekend. She's like, she said, I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry, mom. And I was like, baby, it's okay. Did you mean, did you mean to spill? I don't know what, even what it was. Did you mean to spill your water? Yeah, and it was just like, if it's an accident, it's okay. You know, it happens. Exactly. And I, I'm praying that as she gets older, she doesn't have that automatic lingo of I'm sorry, because it it's what well, I love the way you explained it. Like I never put my finger on it, but I can feel it in my heart. I don't want you to feel like you did something wrong. Exactly. Right. And when you, when you think about you're giving them the ability to be human and make a mistake and just explain what happened and how it's mm-hmm. not going to happen again, you're actually providing growth for them as well. And I feel better. I feel better when I'm not hearing. I mean, uh, this is truly one of my biggest pet peeves. Like when I'm around a bunch of women and someone says, does anyone need anything from the kitchen? And I say, I'd love a glass of water. Okay, great. And they forget to bring it back. No big deal. Right. right. So I get up and go to get it. Oh, uh-huh. my, I'm so sorry. I forgot to get your water. You don't need to apologize for that. I'm sorry to me, it, it, you mm-hmm. could just truly say, whoops, whoops, I forgot to get you water. Let me go get it. Or, um, you know, you just don't have to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. in almost every situation can be replaced. Wow. I believe that yeah. happened. Let me make it right. Right. And it diminishes us to say, I'm sorry, because I think that takes a little bit away from our, our something, but it, it, it diminishes our worth. I don't know if that's the right thing, but it feels it that way. It does. It actually, especially in a client mm-hmm. service provider relationship. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to call you back. Oh, I'm sorry. That came in late. Oh, I'm sorry. That sofa is going to be delayed. That's mm-hmm. taking ownership of stuff that you didn't have control over or I did. Unfortunately, I didn't get to call you back yesterday, but I called you first thing this morning. You don't have to add. It changes. It changes so much right there. It it continues to keep you as equals. It's one professional hiring and another professional. You are not subservient, even though we are in a service type of industry. 
Uh, seriously, I could talk about this for hours because I, I was just going to think this needs to be a whole podcast. <laughs> this say, is just like getting under my skin. It's listen, so true. Peers. I'm a peer. My, when you hire me as your coach, you're a peer that has a very distinct talent that I do not have. And I'm a peer that has a very distinct talent that you don't have. So you're mm-hmm. hiring me to teach you from my talent. And someday I'm going to possibly hire you for your talent. You should never let a client make you feel less than just because they're exchanging money with you for what you do best. And that's part of what that I'm sorry changes the balance of the power in the relationship. And you will mm-hmm. notice this with spouses, siblings, children, and clients, and professional peer relationships. If you're always mm-hmm. one saying, I'm sorry, on a construction site with a bunch of men, and you're the woman, you will quickly find they are walking all over you and not respecting you. Damn Skippy. Yeah, I, that is such a such a true statement. Okay, well, we will just schedule another podcast for that <laughs> okay. because I could go into that one and using the word just. I just wanted to email you. Yeah. And you pull that out and it still puts you as you're interrupting them Correct. or I, things along that line. So yes, just keeping that balance of power. Whew. Y'all, this podcast episode was made possible in part by Foyer, a lightning fast interior design software that creates photo realistic renderings. I'm not kidding. You can barely tell that it's not a real room. So why leave your beautiful designs up to the imagination of your client when you can show them what their space is going to look like? You will sign more clients and get more approvals with this software. It's powered by artificial intelligence and I'll vouch for its ease because if I can do it, anybody can, because y'all know that my design team are the ones who do all the work. Find them in the show notes. I, I know it's a lot. Let me get what some water. Happened, what happened? <laughs> I know I need a sip of my coffee. What happened was, and I'm looking for the page because I don't even remember the link exactly. We created a document. I'm literally looking in my own book because I can't remember the website. Okay. When you buy the book, there's a part where it says you can download a PDF, um, which we titled "Don't Say That, Say wow. This." Oh yeah. Resource okay. guide on page 133. Okay. It's free and it allows you to post word replacements on your desk. So if you struggle with saying things a certain way that may come across as either, I'm sorry, aggressive, curt. I mean, I can't tell you how many emails and texts I rewrite for my one-on-one clients. You know, I always say, what do you mm-hmm. want to say? Put it together first because I don't want them coaching with me forever. I am meant to coach them to be great business people yeah. and fly on their own. But then I quickly turn it now, you write it next time and let me see how you do. And we start training them on how to respond differently to difficult situations. What a great service that is. I mean, because my team and I, we we do that. But teaching just your outside coaching clients how to review that because Debbie and Megan, they can do it all now because that's what we started doing because they were my team. Right. But hell, I'm going to have to keep that in mind just so I can refer people because that in itself is a huge, huge skill. (laughs) That's half of what Voxer is used for. So all my one-on-one group clients get a walkie talkie access to me. I love Voxer. They'll be like, my client said this, what do I say back? And I'll, they'll know in the beginning I'll, I'll spoon feed them. And then Mm -hmm. A month or two into the relationship coaching with me, I'll be like, what do you want to say? And how will you say it? And then we start uh-huh. training them to, they, they joke around, they go, think like Nancy. They use the quotes, air quotes, right? <laughs> <laughs> what would Nancy say, right? And we start training them to think less emotionally, yeah. more logically, and less from a, a, a place of insecurity and more confidence. Oh, I'm going to look you up on Boxer. Okay. Nancy. <laughs> I'll be oh happy God. to get a message from you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> so last question, and then we're going to go into my um, fun little rapid fire Q&A questioning. Um, how, do you, what, what's your advice for dealing with an online bad review? I just c- actually came across this not so long ago. Uh, okay. not, thankfully not for me, but it was one of my. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my- so I'm going to give you my personal, ex- I had a personal experience and then uh-huh. how I coach my, my clients. So yes. my personal experience was unfortunate. It was an ex-boyfriend who decided he was mad at me for breaking up and he put scathing, not one, but two reviews. 
Oh. So it's a wonderful thing that was multiple years ago, three or four years ago, to have a great community to say, can everyone help me out? You tag oh. it on Facebook, you tag it as inappropriate. Facebook, if it's enough people reporting it, will take it down. And then I also said, if you feel so kind as to give me a review for what I do for you, I'd appreciate it. So if Facebook doesn't take it down, we can bury it. So they that did happen. Genius. And- you too can do that. So they did take it down. Mm-hmm. Plus I got 46 reviews in one day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, maybe I should try that again. <laughs> I was like, who else can I piss off? <laughs> right. Through, through my tears that day. I'm like, this is so nice. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I went into my group, the interior design business forum. And I'm like, I think it had about 3000 people in it at the time. Now it's up to, I don't know, seven or 8,000, but Amazing. It, it was like, could you all please do me a favor? But if a client gets a negative review, an interior designer, let's say, their tendency is to be so verbose in answering it. Well, you said this and I said this and da, 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 and I want them to know. And, da, 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 and I'm like, no, you're getting yeah. sucked into that negative tornado. And mm-hmm. it's much more professional for you to say one of a couple of things. So let me think. One could be, as we discussed on the phone these were not exactly the facts, but I am disappointed that you are upset. And like literally leave it at that, right? It's going to show that you took yeah. my road. And you said you didn't even say, I'm sorry, you're upset. No, <laughs> no. And again, I ne- it's like natural for me not to say I'm sorry anymore that sometimes I actually have to go, oh, I should have said I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> another way to handle it would be the way I handled mine. Get your loving tribe, putting family, friends, and ex-clients to bury the review while reporting it, if Mm -hmm. possible. Uh, But most of the time, I'd say, get a check on reality of how many people are actually going to see that bad review and believe it. And give Mm -hmm. a really professional, it's unfortunate you feel that way. I provided you with everything that I had promised you I would provide you with for what you paid me. Yes. And it's just, it's just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Just the facts. And in my group, somebody did write like a very long, this woman wrote this. So I wrote, the, I'm, I'm thinking of writing this back and oh my God, it was so long. And I'm like, please don't do that. And I just said, so I'm like, please don't do that. Just do not, <laughs> have, a, a, do not have a public pissing match. Yes. It's just, yeah, I can see that on my next door app all the time. <laughs> Right. Yes. Do you guys not have anything better to do than come up with these responses that are just like, like you said, a pissing match? Right. And how long did it take you to come up with that pissing match? <laughs> I got that hour that you could have been working and billing a client just yeah. by you know pissing back on this client, so fearful that it's going to change the trajectory of your business forever. No, it's yeah. not. It's one no. review. You answer professionally. You just dismiss it. Basically, is my answer. You dismiss it. When mm-hmm. unfortunately we are not a match as we discovered during working together, but I am happy I was able to provide you for ev- all the value that you paid for. And if anything, that professionalism is going to show anybody who's reading it that you have that emotional and professional maturity to just move on. Maybe I will call her. <laughs> it exactly. could work in the other direction. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, oh, a, that's what you want is to always look like the professional. Don't go, don't lower yourself to their level ever. Yeah. I love that, Nancy. And holy cow, I could literally sit here and have another hour or two conversation with you. I do hope to have the pleasure of meeting and hugging you in the future. But yeah. in the meantime, in the meantime, the next segment is a rapid fire Q&A. Oh, no. It's just a, <laughs> it's just so that our audience can get to know you. Just a little bit better. Nothing's off the table. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, so let's see what we've got. We'll start off easy. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right. When was the last time you laughed until you almost peed yourself? Uh, two days ago with my daughter over the cave cricket that was hopping around my house and don't to <laughs> catch it. Uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, uh, it was, she was screaming at 25 years old. She's screaming. I'm walking around with the Swiffer. <laughs> it's hopping. We're screaming. We're laughing. It was really funny. Oh, that sounds, everybody needs a good laugh yes. more often than not. Uh, what's your dream travel destination? 
I want to go back to Tuscany. I've been there already, but I would love to live in Tuscany for two or three months. And Mm -hmm. really just, I'm all Italian, so I'd love to just get more into the food and the uh, we should gather a whole bunch of interior design business coaches and have a mastermind at a villa. I'm in. <laughs> what I'm do you in. say? Totally. <laughs> I would yes. love to do it. Or a bunch of clients and just do oh. a full interior design master class, three day or week, whatever. Well, retreat, yeah, that sounds great. Have a couple people rotating through. You can yeah. stay for a week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the things we could do and write it off on taxes. Um, <laughs> exactly. Chocolate chip or oatmeal cookie? Chocolate chip every time. Yeah. Um, red or white wine? Chardonnay, white. Oh, brand? <laughs> do you have a favorite? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity Chardonnay drinker. No, I do not have. I, I like many, but I do order my wine from Dry Farm Wines, which is yes. no sugar and no sulfates. Because mm-hmm. of my trip to Tuscany, I couldn't believe how much we could drink and not have a hangover. Right, um, right, right, right. Yeah, I, and I yes, I'm a full believer with that. Okay, <laughs> if you couldn't be in the profession you're in now, what would you be doing? If I couldn't be in the profession I'm in now, so it's not my dream or, when I was a kid. Or, it's or if you weren't, if you weren't in this profession, what would you be? I don't know. What would I do? That's a good thing, right? Yeah, that's a good, you know what? I love what I do. And what didn't come up is I'm also a body language trainer, which goes hand in hand with communication. So I've been continuing my education so that I can continue to teach. I guess maybe I'd be a psychologist. (laughs) Uh Yeah, but we kind of are, right? Yeah. Kind of are. And I'm glad it didn't come up as body language because I would have had to turn my camera off as we record (laughs) this audio. (laughs) Everybody, everybody gets nervous when I tell them oh, I'm sure. body language trainer. I love that though. It, it's so d- new podcast. Any belly button or outie belly button? Any. And what is your favorite form of exercise? Treadmill and running outside, which I can no longer do without aches and pains so much, but I still love it as my go-to to clear my head it would be running. That's how you decompress. Yes. There you go. Yes. There you go. When was the last time you took a nap? In High Point a week ago. <laughs> I don't know when this is coming out, but in uh, October. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just yesterday I had that conversation with my staff, <laughs> my team member. Yeah, when but, I was yeah. in High Point, I got tired. I'm like, I don't need to be anywhere. I could be a lot of places, but you know what? I'm going to go back and take a nap in my hotel room. And it was fabulous. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes. So are you an introvert or an extrovert? I am an ambivert, which is a little bit of both. I gain Mm -hmm. a lot of energy from being around people that I'm helping. But when I go into a just a social situation, sometimes Mm -hmm. it's a little draining for me. So I have to go rejuvenate and be by myself. So I'm a little bit of both. That makes sense. I can, I can, I can see that there's a difference when you go to social versus going to serve. Yes. Yes. Hmm. I'm going to serve is what helps a lot of people. Um, I'm, one of my kids suffers from pretty so, pretty severe social anxiety. And mm-hmm. there's a tie there to when you are serving, you tend not to feel it as much as when you're just being yourself, which is mm-hmm. interesting, right? Because the interesting is not on you. Or no, like, the attention's not on you. The attention is on the, the audience that you're serving. Correct. And the information you're giving and providing. Right. Love that. All right. Last question. Just to respect everybody's time, we're running. It's been such a great conversation. We just need to have like three of these. If you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would you invite? One person. Vanessa Van Edwards, who wrote the book Captivate, who is my body language trainer. She's the one who certified me. And I love her. And I love the science behind body language and just her whole mission in life and, and understanding human nature and the nonverbal is fascinating mm-hmm. to me that I would love to get her to dinner and talk to her all about that. And, and watch. And, <laughs> and watch, right? And her and I would be watching each other the whole time. But yeah, she's, I love science behind sales and, and body language and communication. Mm-hmm. So it's always fascinating to me, people who actually put science behind what they teach, which is love why that. I pursued that. I, yeah. Uh, because there's more than just what, no pun intended. There's more than what meets the eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my 
my gosh, Nancy, thank you so much for being on the show today. I have thoroughly enjoyed this. I've, I've loved watching you grow and thrive, you know, over the past few years and really wished you were around when I was starting my business. It was just not so pretty, but I'm certain that the audience has loved everything you've shared on today's podcast. So can you tell them how and where they can connect with you? Well, certainly they can go to my website, which is mm-hmm. nancyganzacoffer.com, which I'm sure you'll put a link in and they can join yep. my Facebook group, the Interior Design Business Forum, if they're an interior designer. I also just want to thank you so much for having me on the, the Design for the Creative Mind um, podcast here. Michelle, you, Absolutely. I've been watching you too, and you are doing amazing with your bakery and everyone's having mm-hmm. such success that it's so impressive to watch you grow and help so many people also. So thank you for everything you do for the industry too, because I really do believe all of us need to help everyone who needs help. Um, yes. A rising ready. tide lifts all boats. Definitely. And this industry is just so, so hungry because what we do serves, I mean, it changes lives. It does. In somebody's homes, they wake up to a refuge, they go to sleep in a refuge, they can be their best selves in the middle of the day. Yeah. And it's just like the collaboration that we are showing from mm-hmm. the top down, so to speak, right? The coaches collaborating, being friendly, supporting each yeah. other is what's going to make them realize that when I started in this industry, nobody would share me as an art consultant. No, I'm not going to share my your art consultant. And I'm like, please share me because otherwise I'm not going to be here for you. <laughs> when you need me, right. So yes. thinking to share your resources, be generous with your mm-hmm. knowledge is just the basis of everything that I do. So thank you for having me. Here. That. I truly appreciate it. Oh my gosh. Well, we will do this again. Yes. So watch for Nancy again in the future. If you enjoyed this one or whenever you're listening to it, you might search and find if we've got three more. Yes. I think we've got enough, enough conversational pieces. And for those of you who can benefit from even more resources surrounding the business of running your interior design business, reach out to Nancy. You can also join my growing community on Facebook's private group. It's called the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. I go live there once a week and then with just some mini trainings. And then I also have workshops every uh, eight-ish weeks. So I hope to see you guys there. And Nancy, thank you again so much. Thank you, Michelle. Talk to you soon. Hey, y'all. If you love the show and find it useful, I would really appreciate it if you would share with your friends and followers. And if you like what you're hearing, want to put a face with a name and get even more business advice, then join me in my Facebook group, the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. Yeah, I know, it's Facebook. But just come on in for the training and then leave without scrolling your feet. It's fun, I promise you'll enjoy it. And finally, I hear it's good for business to get ratings on your podcasts. So please drop yours on whatever platform you use to listen to this. We're all about community over competition. So let's work on elevating our industry one designer at a time. See you next time.